Welcome back. Uh, let's go back uh, to one of our top stories uh, for today and to touch more on the spate of crime in the country and the killing of 17 people in a mass shooting in the Eastern Cape. We're now joined by crime analyst Tabang Bohopa and he joins us now via our video link. Tabang, thank you so much for your time this evening here in SABC News. I mean, let's begin here. We saw and we woke up to the news this morning that 17 people had been killed in the Eastern Cape in a mass shooting. What is your reaction uh, to uh, what took place today in Lusikisiki? Good evening, my fellow sister, and good evening to the viewers. It is very unfortunate to have experienced that event. However, it tells you that if you have observed that the police have been raiding down on some of the most popular extortionists in the Eastern Cape in the previous weeks. So if you understand typology of crime, you would expect some form of comeback from the gangsters. So it is a way of retaliation from some of the most influential gangsters that are operating in that region. And it is very sad that it ends up even affecting innocent people, innocent family members of some of the alleged gang members of some of these gangs that are in rivalry in the Eastern Cape. Alleging that uh, perhaps uh, this looks uh, like it's gang related and uh, you know one would also say that in the Eastern Cape we've seen uh, various stories of this year when it comes uh, to extortion what could be behind you know this mass uh, killing I mean the reports are also saying uh, that uh, you know there was a family gathering that was taking place and out of the blue uh, you know then they saw uh, this take place are you attributing this to gang violence in the area? Yes, honestly, if you look at the gangsterism patterns that were previously in the Western Cape, you can see that the Western Cape has really improved in terms of policing. So some of the gangs have now migrated from the Western Cape to the Eastern Cape. And nonetheless, now that there's so much high competition in the Eastern Cape in terms of gangsterism that are focused mainly on extortion, then there becomes rivalry between the different gangsters. But then also, now that the corruption is being kept in government, it means that the, the competition is so high for a little reward. I, I hope you understand how I'm putting it, that most of these extortionists or construction mafias, as they are called, would benefit mainly from the con corruption that was involved in terms of government procurement. And now that there is minimal opportunities in terms of extortion, regarding corruption activities in terms of mega tenders now they are competing for the very few that are left while they are competing for the few that are left you have now big gangs that are now running away from western cape and coming back home or back to eastern cape and that creates a confusion in terms of gang rivalry particularly in the extortion crime crime pattern Mm. And how common are, you know, mass murders of this nature? And I mean, I'm asking this uh, because of the patterns that you speak about. We've seen this uh, in the Western Cape. We've seen this in the Eastern Cape. We've also seen this uh, in KwaZulu-Natal. You know, how prominent are they uh, in our country? Yeah, whenever gang-related murders are involved and extortion particularly, the challenge with such matters is that they have to number one eliminate the main victim or main target but eliminate anyone who, who could be a potential witness in that case so if they are targeting me and they find me with 12 other family members they cannot just kill me and run away unlike in kzn kzn they used to do that but in other provinces if they find me and my family they eliminate me and all those people to avoid the people becoming witnesses to testify against those suspects in future could the suspects be arrested in in in, in court mm. and i mean no one has been arrested we've seen uh, you know these reports coming out uh, from the eastern cape uh, police we've seen no uh, no one arrested you know the, the the police are not even sure how many suspects they are on the lookout for you know how sure can we be uh, that the police can get to the bottom of this uh, crime if no one has been arrested so far yeah, my sister, it's a very situation that the appetite for cabin crime, particularly organized crime, in some of these provinces is very low. Eastern Cape is one of those provinces whereby such crimes or criminal activities have been ignored for so long to an extreme extent that even now, I'm telling you, number one, most of the police officials are demoralized to even follow those cases. It will need a, a specialized unit or a, yeah, a specialized unit to come and investigate that case or there must be 
a special project just to invest that case so that they will have to they will have to source in the best detectives but even in that case as long as the appetite for solving such organized criminal activities is very low in the upper structures or in the senior management within the province i'm telling you it is going to be very difficult to even detect that crime i'm saying this because even if evidence was to come the police are not even sure that are we safe to even process this further are we even safe to send this evidence to the prosecution will i not be the next one on the line so Someone is investigating a criminal offense, but on the back of their mind, they're thinking about their own families. Remember when these criminals are doing this, they are sending a message to the whole public to say, we are capable of killing not just one person, but the whole family. So anyone who, particularly the indigents of Eastern Cape, I'm talking about normal de de detectives and DPCI members who are indigents of Eastern Cape. This means if you are staying in the same location or same country with some of the rival gangs, remember gangsters, don't hide the fact that they are gangs. Mm. So if you go to where they come from, they are known, and they would even publicly talk about it. They can even come to you and confront you to say, if you dare try to follow us, you and your family are next. So it is there's a high prevalence that there might be low detection in these cases. Mm. At the same time, let's touch on the issue around firearms in this country. I mean, in Parliament, uh, we saw uh, reports coming out that at least 400 firearms belonging to the police uh, have gone missing uh, in the past six months. Surely when we see crimes of this nature, uh, one can say it's highly concerning uh, when you have uh, police also, you know, losing uh, their weapons. That is so sad, man, in terms of the Firearm Control Act of 2000. Uh, there's two things that I want to mention. The, the, the legislation speaks to the registrar and the designated firearm official, DFO. But a, a general question should be asked that, who are those people? What is their level of competence? You go to Eastern Cape, a local police station of your choice to say, who's the designated firearm official of this police station? What qualifications do they even have? What skill subset do they purport for them to deal with those cases? So it's a challenge. Then let's come back to the one that you mentioned of a, a large number of firearms going missing within the South African police services. That's a challenge because at the end of the process of owning a firearm is the disposal of that firearm, whereby it must either be crushed or melted or destroyed through detonation. Now, that's whereby you would find bulk firearms being in possession of either the provincial supply chains or often even the national supply chains. And if someone was to penetrate at that level, and remember the law just says that this, the designated firearm official or the registrar must make sure that all the firearms are disposed according to the law. Mm. Now, but Tabang, maybe let's also touch on the fact that, you know, because we are running out of time here, what are the reco uh, repercussions here for police officials who lose their firearms? Do we have, you know, any sort of repercussions uh, for police officers in this country who lose their firearms? Yes, my sister, we have seen harsh disciplinary actions being taken against sub police officials, but you ought to understand that the firearms that often get lost are not the ones that are allocated to a member's name. It's firearms that are in the possession of a local police station or a district or a provincial office. So they will be lost in bulk. In that case, there will be many people involved and there's likelihood that there will be cover up as to who must be liable for that act. All right, uh, Tabang, thank you so much uh, for your insights uh, on this very concerning story uh, tonight coming out uh, from uh, the Eastern Cape. Uh, that is uh, Tabang Bohoba. He is a crime analyst uh, giving us his insights in terms of what has taken place in that mass uh, murder in the Eastern Cape.